So today we're going to talk about upper body warm-ups and what we do to make things different. And one big thing we do to make things different is change hand positions and I'm going to show you the big ways to make that accessible and usable. So the first thing we have here today is the normal cable tricep push down that almost everybody does. Pretty common exercise. Now as you can see in this bar, this is what we call a mustache bar, but you see all these different angles on this. Now this angle was originally designed to be here and to reduce stress on the wrist. And that's a good idea, but the problem is, is that one position the same way all the time is going to create a lot of overuse issues. So the first thing that we need to combat is mileage. And that's the first portion of this, is the reason that we change what we do and the positions we do it in is to reduce mileage. Now, there might be the fastest way to get better, might be to do the exact same thing all the time, but then you're gonna run into the other problem, which is why you need to rotate stuff, which is called the law of accommodation. So let's lay those out on the board and take a look at those. The first law that we have to really, really put in mind is the law of accommodation. This law pretty much states that if you use the same stimulus too long or too often, it's not gonna have as a potent of a punch or an effect on the body. How do we kind of adjust from that? Well, the big thing we do is we change the mode. And what does the mode mean? Well, tricep extensions with a cable, you can only do so many ways, but if you have a couple different variations, i.e. normal grip, supinated grip, wide, narrow, and different implements, now we can make a similar exercise just different enough that the law of accommodation becomes our friend and not our enemy. This is the true power of having a rotating system with multiple libraries of exercises. Now, if you're looking for more exercises, we're gonna start building that library on the Patreon channel. But for today, I'm gonna to show you some of the big ones that we use all the time. The next big thing that we have to always keep in mind when we're doing our training, what we keep in mind here at the gym with our online clients and all that stuff, is reducing mileage. You know, it's not really that complicated to get stronger unless you're already at a really high level. Most beginners can get stronger with very basic programs. But can they get you stronger with keeping the mileage either low or nilch? One of the best ways to do that is to constantly change the exercise and that will reduce the mileage, meaning that the pressure gradients change depending on how I have my hands set, depending on how I have my body set. Therefore, it's gonna not only create a law of accommodation kind of trick by doing something different all the time, but it's also going to keep the mileage low. In my opinion, over the last 30 years of training my ass off, I've realized that I can train a muscle really, really hard as long as it's a different stimulus all the time. That also keeps me growing, but also keeps the mileage down on the ligaments, tendons, and bones. So that's why we have such a vast library of exercises and so many things to change. We're trying to fight the law of accommodation, which is a constant battle, but we're also trying to get stronger while reducing mileage down on the exercise implemented on the body. So the first thing we have is our normal tricep push down. As you can see, my grip's fairly narrow. I'm gonna keep my elbows pointed towards the ground and I'm gonna keep my shoulders out of the exercise. You go to the average gym, you're gonna start seeing people rolling their shoulders and using their shoulders like this to push down. You're not really doing anything with that and you're creating a poor motor pattern. So keep your elbows tucked in, keep them tight, try to keep them in as much as you can, and then you just wanna keep it at a lever. Now, this is a narrower grip, mustache bar tricep push down. Now, how I can change this next week is I can go to a wider grip. That's gonna take it out maybe six, seven inches. I'm gonna do almost what appears to be the same exercise, but now I'm at a different angle and my body's just a little bit wider. That's gonna have a slight difference in how my tricep gets hit, therefore increasing a little bit more muscle tissue, but also reducing the wear and tear on my elbow. Now the next big thing that you don't see a lot of people do is reverse the hand. So if I take the hand and I turn it backwards, now my tricep's gonna have to work completely different. Right, same muscle, same similar movement, but now that my hand's in a different position, the elbow is gonna get relief. But if I do any one of these ways too long, I'm gonna start creating overuse injuries and overuse problems. A lot of people that I see that have tendonitis issues tend to get it because they're doing the exact same exercise all the time, case in point. A lot of people go, well, Matt, I do my 100 triceps before I bench, but my elbows are starting to bother me. And then I ask them, oh, okay, well, what are you doing for your tricep pushdowns? Well, I use the rope like I see in your videos. And I'm like, that's all you've used for the last six months? Yeah, well, there's your problem. Every week, we do upper body twice a week. And on these tricep exercises that we do, we do not use the same bar, but maybe once a month, and that's 
cutting it very, very close. A lot of times it's anywhere from a six to eight week cycle. So you can see that the rotation of the type of bars that we're using is very vast. The reason that we do that is to fight the two, the two rules that we just went over. The next exercise that we use is a dumbbell bench press that we talk about in winning warmups all the time. Four sets of 25, right? Well, there's a lot of different ways we can use to see standard dumbbells. So as you can see, his grip is at a 45 degree angle right now. It's a little bit different than a straight bar. I like to do my dumbbell warmups with a different angle than the straight bar, right? We're, we're getting tons of straight bar work anyway. So it'll change the dumbbell. So he's got it at a 45, he's gonna do 10 reps that way. So as you can see, he's keeping it kind of at a 45 degree angle. Okay, good. Now the next way we could do it next week or next workout would be we're gonna do it in a hammer style. So now he's gonna keep it in a hammer style and do it that way. The next way we could do it would be a supinated grip, which we're gonna turn it backwards. Now he's gonna do it that way. They're all presses, but those slight variation differences keep shoulders from getting nagged, keeps the, the elbow healthy, and all that stuff. Now the next thing we could do is almost do a rotating press. So he's gonna start with a hammer, and as he comes up, he's gonna turn it into a straight bar. Now we got a rotation to it. So I would say 75% of the time, you just saw all the variations in how we change, how we do these presses. This is huge for keeping the shoulders healthy, making sure the muscles are getting new stimuluses all the time and keeping the volume at an optimal range that we can create a lot of muscle with very little wear and tear. So today we went over some upper body variations that we do. If you can take away anything from this video, take away we're trying to fight law of accommodation and we're trying to reduce wear and tear. How do we do that? We change the mode or the exercise angle. So we change dumbbell positions, we change lat pull down positions and we train tricep positions. This is how I'm able to maintain a 300 rep warm up before every training heavy bench press cycle or upper body workout and I don't get any little elbow tweaks or, or shoulder tweaks or back tweaks because they're constantly getting used in a slightly different variation. This slight variation is massive in a long term program. So if you don't know much about the programming and how to do that, go check out our Patreon channel and also we're gonna post some more snippets on the YouTube channel on how to make sure your programming is getting your optimum amount of your time and energy. So today I wanted to talk a little bit about training smart while aging and I didn't think there was any better person to talk to than Stan Efforting. I train, I feel neurologically fatigued when I'm done with the workout, but if I had to, I could do that workout the next day. We tried some of this earlier, it's absolutely crazy delicious. Yep. And this is a meal that I'll cook up in the morning, it takes you know, while I'm preparing the kids for school, and then I'll make a couple extras. You're still going to be really strong when you're 65. stay strong, but get insanely healthy at the same time.